Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. A very very warm good evening to everyone. It's Friday, it's 8 p.m. means it's time once again for a live weekly explained session. As all of you know, every Friday at 8 p.m. we bring to you some of the most important news stories from the UPSC perspective strictly. Now, if you have been reading the newspaper and if you have been following the news, not just in India, but across the world, the biggest news by far, especially in the Indian media and amongst the Indians, is that the Britain now has a new Prime Minister. The new Prime Minister is Rishi Sunak. This is a historic moment for not just UK, not just India, but for the entire developed world right now. He is the first Prime Minister of Asian origin, the first Prime Minister of colour that UK has ever had. He is also one of the youngest Prime Ministers that UK has ever had. Now, while the entire media is focusing on the story of him being of Indian origin or not, and there are a lot of debates whether or not Indians should celebrate or Indians should ignore that, the fact remains that the British economy as a whole is in a very, very bad state. Just because they have a new Prime Minister does not mean that automatically there is a magic wand that will improve everything in their economy. In this session, we will be discussing the economic and the political issues that are ongoing in the British economy right now. We will also be discussing what exactly were the factors because of which the British economy now has actually ended up in this bad state, which is very, very rare for an advanced country which is looked up to by many, many nations across the world. So without any further ado, let's begin the session. Now, as you know, the biggest news is that Rishi Sunak has now become the British Prime Minister. This is fifth Prime Minister that UK has had in the last six years. Now, the Prime Ministers in UK are changing at a very, very rapid pace ever since the country took the decision of Brexit. Ever since they took the decision that we don't want to be the part of EU and we will come out. Since then, there has not been political stability in the country. Now, when David Cameron was a Prime Minister, his going away and Theresa May coming to power, that was not mainly anything to do with economic crisis. That were most of a political statement that was made by the UK government. But now, the Prime Minister are changing at a very, very fast pace, so much so that in the last two months, we have the third Prime Minister in UK. This has all got to do with the economic crisis that Britain is going through. Now, whatever we discuss about the economic crisis of Britain, a lot of that is also applicable to other parts of Europe right now. In the past few months, especially ever since the Ukraine-Russia war started, not just UK, but most of the European economies have been going through a very, very tough time. And there are a lot of reasons that are responsible for that. The one big reason being inflation and the rise in price of natural gas and oil. As you know, almost entire Europe depends immensely on Russia for import of natural gas. At a time when the winters are again coming back in Europe, at a time when they are dependent highly on Russia's natural gas to keep their places warm, and at a time when the prices of natural gas are increasing, the economic crisis can be seen in not just UK, but in many European nations. But in UK especially, some reasons for the economic crisis can be connected to Russia. But there are some other reasons which are actually because of their own policies, because of the decisions that they took themselves. Before we go there, let's quickly talk about Rishi Sunak. As you know, his father or his parents also were not really from India. If you actually have to trace back his connection to India, you have to get at least two generations before him. That is why many people say that he is not really of Indian origin per se. Yes, he is a son-in-law of Narayan Murthy, who is the founder of Infosys. But apart from that, his direct Indian connection is not that much. Even if there would have been an Indian connection, you have to understand he is a British citizen. And when you become a citizen of another country, your loyalty and your love lies to that particular country and not really to the country of your origin. But even then, it is a historic moment, not just for India, but for the entire Asian community and for Britain. Britain, because it has been seen for many, many centuries as the place where racism still exists, as a place where the whites consider themselves to be far superior as compared to anyone else in their country. 
for such a country to have a non-wide prime minister for the first time ever is in fact a big big deal now he is not someone who is not known across the country in fact he has been a part of the government many many times he was the former chancellor of the exchequer which is very similar to the finance minister that we have in india so he has held important positions in the government not just this, he is very highly educated, he was an investment banker and during his time in investment banking, he actually earned a lot of money. He is considered to be one of the richest politicians in UK. So he is a self-made man and he is a very, very successful profession before even entering politics. He is just 42, making him one of the youngest prime ministers that UK has ever had, certainly the youngest in the last 200 years. Now, let me take a step back and let's see how exactly did he get to become the Prime Minister of UK. As you know, Liz Truss, the UK Prime Minister before him resigned because her policies and she herself could not cope up with the economic crisis. Let's try and understand in very brief what exactly was the economic crisis and why is it that the British government was not able to cope up with it. Now there are many factors that are at play because of which this crisis has emerged not just in UK but in many European nations. Let me write those down for you. The first, as I said, the Russia-Ukraine war. Because of the Russia-Ukraine war, what has happened is that the prices of natural gas have increased considerably because of which the cost of living for every common citizen in UK has increased. At the same time, the world is still trying to get over the pandemic. Now, what has pandemic got to do with it? When pandemic hit, many advanced nations around the world, including US as well, what they did was, because their citizens were losing jobs or they were not earning, these countries went ahead and distributed a lot of money to their citizens. Because of a lot of money going into the hands of the citizens, while the production remained the same, the simple side effect was that this led to huge inflation. Inflation in the sense that things became very, very costly. Even the common commodities which the people have to buy to sustain in day-to-day -day life, those became extremely costly. That is why pandemic came at a very, very wrong time for all across the world but especially for those countries which decided to distribute free money because of which inflation is still out of control in most advanced economies including UK, including US, etc. Now, how do you come out of it? There are different policies that you can actually think of. What Liz Truss did was actually considered as a disaster. Liz Truss, when she became the Prime Minister, as you would have seen, it was a competition between Listras and Rishi Sunak who would become the next Prime Minister. Both of these had different ideas. Listras had an idea under which she said that we will support the top richest people, the industrialists in UK. So basically her idea was downward filtration. Downward filtration. Now let's take a very simple example. Let's assume the government in a country wants to help the people and wants to give some money to the common people, uh, let's say middle class, lower middle class, poor people. Now how can the government do that? There are two options. One way in which the government can do that is, let's say in India, when the government gives certain cash transfers to the farmers, when the government of India says that we will give free food grains to the poor people. So this is one way of doing it. That is when you are supporting directly the poor people, the middle class, the low middle class who need help from the government. This is one way. The other way is, which was adopted by Liz Truss and her government, that we will actually support the richest people. How? Her government announced that we are introducing tax cuts for the rich people. So rich people were told that you will not have to pay taxes or you will have to pay very little tax we are not taking taxes from you. Now, what was the intention behind this? The intention was not wrong. The government thought that now that we are taking lesser taxes and lesser money from the rich people, they have more money in their hands, they have more money in their pocket. The expectation was that now these industrialists, these rich people, will invest that money and they will give jobs to more and more people. 
so there will be expansion of the industrialist activities there will be expansion of jobs manufacturing more people will be employed more people will be given good jobs they will start earning money they will start paying taxes to government so government will basically get that money back indirectly however that did not work out well why see when you go ahead with this approach downward filtration when you support only the top tier in the pyramid and hope that the benefit will trickle down automatically the problem here is you are being very optimistic you are hoping that the top people the richest people will not keep all the cash in their pocket they will actually go ahead and expand their business activities but what happened in UK and in many other parts of the country was when the government said to the rich we are not taking many taxes from you instead of expanding their industrial activities instead of saying okay we are now going to spend more money in giving jobs they actually kept the money in their own pocket so the benefit that the government wanted to give did not reach till the lower level Liz Truss when she became the prime minister she announced a mini budget in this mini budget she had announced that we are giving tax cuts worth 50 billion pounds this was one of the biggest tax cuts in the UK history now understand this when the government announces that we are giving tax cuts means when the government says we will collect very little taxes from people now government has to work government has to earn money if they are not earning money through taxes then what will they do they will have to get that money somehow right government can't just run on water so UK government because they were giving these tax cuts had to take a lot of loan so much so that now if you look at the British economy what has happened is their ta their loan to GDP ratio or as you say their debt to GDP ratio is more than 100% right now it is more than 100% it is close to 150% right now so the debt that they have actually now acquired it is huge 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 debt and for the government to pay it back this also now is becoming a problem now there is one more very interesting factor that has happened and that factor has got something to do with dollar a few days back you would have seen and this actually got uh, viral across the social media when our finance minister when she was asked a question about the weakening rupee she said that rupee is not weakening actually it is dollar that is getting stronger now many people laughed many people said that no this is a joke but in some way she was not actually lying what she meant was that it is not just the Indian rupee currencies across the world in comparison to dollar are actually weakening and the same is case with the British pound as well now why is that happening see the simple idea is American investors have invested their American dollars in markets throughout the world let's assume the investors have invested in India and they were hoping they were they will be able to get a good rate of return from India now what has happened is in America also there is good number of or there is good percentage of inflation right now because government spent a lot of money gave a lot of free money to people during COVID now because of that increasing inflation the Federal Reserve of US decided that in order to curb inflation what can you do see if you have to curb inflation there are two ways one you can increase the supply in the market of commodities but that is not that easy the second is you can actually take out money from the market you can try to take out as much cash as possible from the market people will have lesser money in their hand the demand will reduce inflation will come down so Federal Reserve of US what they were doing is they have been increasing their rate of interest meaning that they have been asking people if you deposit money in the bank now you will get a higher rate of interest so they are making it attractive for the people to bring their money out of the market and basically deposit with the banks now think about that American investor who invested money in India now he is thinking if I invest my money in India it is still a bit dangerous you never know what will happen it's a developing country so they are thinking now American Federal Reserve our own central bank has increased the rate of interest so let me take out my dollar from Indian market let me now invest that in US because I will get a good rate of interest so huge amounts of dollars are coming out of Indian market going back to US 
exactly the same is happening in markets across the world including in UK. So in UK also what has happened is that dollars are coming out and those dollars are now going back because of which if you look at the rate of exchange of British pound that is also weakening considerably. So there is pressure on the British pound as well. Weakening of British pound simply means that now if you have to import something the cost will be even higher. So again it's a vicious circle. It was the European countries who had put sanctions on Russian gas because of which Russian gas is not being given to them or it is being actually given through some other countries. Now that they are buying gas from other nations it is becoming even costlier. All these things have now added up to the economic trouble of UK. I'll tell you a very interesting incident what happened. So all these politics they work in such a manner that every country at the end of the day has to look for their own national interest. So when the war between Ukraine and Russia started, these European countries now we are putting sanctions on Russia, we will not uh, take their natural gas because they expected the war will last for a few days, for a few weeks and then everything will be fine. But the war is still continuing and they have put so many sanctions on Russia, so they can't buy natural gas from Russia. Now what do they do? They contacted Qatar, can you give us natural gas? Qatar said, I already have so many people I have to give gas to. There are so many buyers of my gas in Asia, how can I give you the gas? Now, what happened was a few months back, there was a kind of a backdoor agreement. The agreement was European countries said to China that we will buy natural gas from you. So China was supplying natural gas to Europe. Now ask this question to yourself. Where is China getting the natural gas from? China doesn't have its own gas reserves. So what is happening is from Russia, the gas is actually going to China and China is then supplying this gas to Europe. So that Europe can tell the entire world, see we are not taking gas from Russia. So what is happening in this? What is happening is China is making a good profit in between. So they are happy. Russia is happy. They are still selling their gas. The problem is with European nations because now they have to pay a higher price. So their own sanctions are coming back to harm them. And this is a problem not just in UK but in almost entire European continent right now. In fact, if you have been reading the news a few days back, China announced that we might not be able to give you so much gas now because we have to use it on our own. So the problems in Europe are increasing. In fact, recently in the Western media, it was actually covered that electricity bills in UK have increased as much as 80% 8-0. In many cases, they have almost doubled. Many news medias are saying that this is happening for the first time that in a developed, in an advanced nation, people are actually forced to sell off their household stuff just to sustain. All this is happening because of these economic crises. Now, you might ask a question then if the situation is so bad, what will Rishi Sunak do all of a sudden? See, when Liz Truss became the Prime Minister and she was proposing her policy that I will have tax cuts for the rich people, I will have a downward filtration policy, Rishi Sunak had a different kind of a policy. He said that we cannot give tax cuts to the rich people. We have to ensure that we actually give or a boost to the economy without giving all these tax cuts. We have to give a push to manufacturing, but it has to be started at the lowest level, at the common person level and not at the highest level. Now, these are just some of the important points in the economic crisis. The economic crisis right now also has a story about the British government bonds, which we'll come back to in just a few minutes. What is happening with the British government bonds? Because that is also another story in all together. Now, let's start with where does it all begin? As I said, the story of changing of the Prime Ministers one after the other that we saw starting from David Cameron, that actually goes back to the Brexit decision. When the decision of Brexit was taken, David Cameron, who was the Prime Minister, was not really in support of it. But his party actually, the ruling party at that time, forced him to take that decision. Because of that, he resigned. He said that I won't be, uh, I should, do not want to be the Prime Minister anymore because I don't want to continue with this Brexit decision. So since 2016, there has been instability in the British economy. Although the economic situation was not that bad because we did not have the pandemic back then. We did not have the Russia-Ukraine crisis. But even then, there was a political crisis that was starting. The entire reason 
why so many people in Britain voted that we want to get out of EU. The reason for that was that they thought that their economy was better than other European countries and they don't want to help the other EU nations. They thought that Britain is not earning money from EU but giving the money back. So the entire idea behind having Brexit was that the British economy will improve now. It will become much better as compared to the European nations. The, it was a conservative party, the same party that is in power even today. It was a conservative party that actually thought that we will now bring back our ideology of capitalism. I'm sure all of you would have been very familiar with the capitalism ideology. Capitalism simply means again having very, very minimal regulations, lower taxes, ha allowing freedom entirely to the industrialist, to the rich people to expand their businesses so that they can actually expand their market and give more jobs. This is the same ideology that Liz Truss followed. So you can't blame her for doing that. What, what Liz Truss did was nothing out of the blue. It was a policy that her party, the Conservative Party, has been following for a long, long time. This is the same policy that Britain has been following for many, many decades. Just that with changing times, you have to change your ideology. With changing times, you have to change your thinking. I'll give you a very simple example. When India was going through its economic crisis in 1991, India's Prime Minister was P.V. Narasimha Rao. P.V. Narasimha Rao, if you have learned, if you have read about him or if you have seen his politics, P.V. Narasimha Rao was a true socialist. Means, he was always in favor of socialism, he was always in favor of government regulations, he was always in favor of government-run businesses. But it was under his prime ministership that in 1991, India saw the historic LPG reforms. That is because he knew that at that point of time, the requirement was not to follow your ideology. The requirement was something else. And that is why being a socialist, despite that, he actually went towards liberalism. The opposite happened here. In Britain, right now, when the time was for the Conservative Party to forget about its capitalistic ideology, to now think about the lower middle class, to actually give benefits to them, to have the government actually passing on benefits to them, rather than the rich people passing it on, they stuck to their ideology, thinking that, no, 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 this will work. But this is what actually failed them in the long run. As I told you, there have been multiple reasons, and we listed those out for you. Just to revise, the Ukraine-Russia war. The Ukraine-Russia war, and it is difficult to actually understand who has been the biggest loser of this war. Yes, Russia has suffered because of the economic sanctions put on them, because now they are not able to sell their natural gas in large quantities to Europe. But at the same time, Europe also has been suffering, because they have always been dependent to a large extent on the Russian gas and now they can't really get gas at those prices. They thought that the war will be short-lived, they thought that their own sanctions will force Russia to end the war, but that has not happened. If you look at the bigger picture, maybe the only country that has not really suffered a lot is USA. And that is why if you look at the politics of Europe, there is in fact growing anger against US also. There are many politicians in Europe that are saying right now that it is USA that is using Europe for its proxy fight against Russia. It is the European nations that have to suffer right now because of this inflation, because of this crisis in the fuel, in natural gas, etc. On the other hand, it is the US that is sitting pretty and not taking any action. And that is why this growing discontent against US in Europe is now being covered by media throughout Europe. Then we also saw the tax cuts, the giveaways that were given now. Ideally, those should have been targeted towards those people who require it. But as we discussed, the government's policy was that we will first give tax cuts to the rich people. This angered the poor people even more. They thought that at a time when the government should have been helping us, at that time the government is still helping the rich people only. If you look at the opinion polls in UK, so UK has mainly two political parties. There's a conservative party that is in power and then there's a labor party that is in the opposition. 
If you go back a few years, just I think two, two and a half years, if you look at the opinion polls, you would have seen that Labour Party was nowhere in comparison. It was almost like 80-20, that Conservative Party was supported by 80% people, 20% people supported Labour. Now the situation has become so bad, there has been such a huge mishandling of economy by the Conservative Party, that now the polls show that the two parties are almost neck to neck. After so many years, Labour Party actually has a chance of coming back to power. All that is because of the mishandling of the economy, because the people are extremely angry about how the government is now being run. Now, at the same time, the British economy also is facing a crisis where people's trust in the British economy is actually going down. And this is where I wanted to discuss about what is happening with the government bonds. Now, government bonds are also called as guilds. So if you see the word guild, it is the same thing, the government bonds. Now, I'm sure all of you are aware about bonds or government bonds. In very simple terms, government bonds are the easiest way for the government to actually raise money from the market. Let's assume the government wants certain money for certain big infrastructure projects, certain big schemes. What the government will do is, government will ask people that we will give you bonds. Bond means kind of a paper where it will be written that you have given 1 lakh rupees to the government. Government will say that come back after 10 years, I will return 1.2 lakh rupees to you. So means there will be an interest that will be given. So in this case, the interest will be 20%. Out in exchange of 1 lakh, you are getting 1 lakh 20 thousand. This interest it is also called bond yield. This interest rate is also called bond yield. So how much is the bond actually earning? Now, what is happening here is, see, the more secure the government is, the more stable the government is, the lesser is the bond yield. For example, if I invest in the bonds of US government, I know there is almost a 0% chance that US government will be bankrupt. I know if the US government has promised me that after 10 years I'll return this much money to you, it is almost 100% certain that they will fulfill their promise. So when we have a stable government, when we have these kind of situations where government will not go bankrupt, they know that they can get money from anywhere. So they offer a very low rate of interest. They offer a very low yield. So bond yield in stable nations are very low. 1%, 1.2%, 2%. At the same time, let's assume tomorrow, Afghanistan government says that I am issuing government bonds. Now, who will buy? No one will buy because they don't trust the Taliban government. But still, if some people want to take a risk, some people can take a risk and they will say, okay, I will buy government bond, but I will only buy the government bond if the government is actually giving me 15% or 25% interest, 25% bond yield because that is worth the risk. So government says, okay, okay, I will give it to you. Basically, the higher the bond yield means lower is the stability of the government higher the bond yield lower is the stability of the government as simple as that now what is happening in britain is that because of this instability people who have british who have these bonds are actually now selling it in the market now, because a lot of people are selling it in the market, they need cash, they can't really wait, they have a lot of expense now, they are not earning that much money. The British government bond is also losing its value, it, the yields are going up. Now, because the people are now selling something in the market, now please, you can imagine it's common sense. If there is a commodity that everyone wants to sell, what will happen? The price will start to decrease automatically, right? If everyone starts saying that I want to sell gold, I want to sell gold, the price of gold will decrease automatically. The reason why price of gold, diamond is high because the limit, the supply is very limited. Now what is happening is the people in Britain or the institutions in Britain are now selling their government bonds. The yield is going high. The value of the bond is going down because of which actually there is a problem of pension funds also. Now what is the problem of pension funds? See. When the government issues bonds, usually who buys these bonds? You will see usually retail investors don't buy these bonds. These bonds are usually bought by big funds, funds that have collected people's money. So 
in Britain, in US and advanced economies, we have pension funds. Pension funds means those funds which they have collected the money of people who are working right now and these funds have to increase that money so that at the time when they retire, they can give back those funds as pension. So this is, these are called pension funds. Pension funds usually look at options where they can invest money which is free of any risk and they can earn some rate of interest. So a lot of pension funds have invested money in UK bonds. Now the UK bonds are losing their value so much that the pension funds are panicking because their money is losing their value. All of that now is actually becoming very, very problematic. So the pension funds are panicking. The British government doesn't have an answer. The British Central Bank has said that we will come in between and we will now purchase the government bonds to lower the liquidity in the market. All that is actually making a very, it's said to be a perfect storm situation. Perfect storm situation means when everything that can go bad is actually going bad. So in British economy, it's actually spiraling and every single thing that can go wrong is actually going wrong right now. Now, many people can blame list trust for that. You can say that yes. A lot of the reasons because of which the British economy right now is in the present situation may be traced back to list trust and the mini budget that her government announced. The mini budget, as I said, that included huge tax cuts, but only for the rich people. However, if you have to be fair to her, you have to understand most of these factors that we discuss actually go way back as compared to the mini budget. The Ukraine Russia war did not start because of her government. The inflation, not because of her government. We had the situation of the pandemic, that was also not because of her government. So yes, the mini budget in which she announced this huge tax cut has had an extremely important role to play in where UK economy has ended up right now. But you can't really say that it started from there. Yes, it just accelerated the entire process of panic in the British economy. So after the mini budget was announced, it was her and her finance minister, the uh, the Chancellor of uh, Exchequer of Chancellor. However, even then, she fired her finance minister. She said that no, the finance minister has to go. It is the finance minister who is responsible. Now, she also, before resigning, she in fact apologized for the mini budget a couple of days before resigning. And now she is also gone. Rishi Sunak most probably has now decided to take back this tax cuts. In fact, her government, Lister's government also had announced that we are taking back these tax cuts, whatever we had announced. So Rishi Surak now has to decide whether or not those tax cuts will come back or how would the government actually support the economy. Now, if you look at the data, if you look at the graphs, every economic indicator through which you want to judge the British government, you can say all those economic indicators are in a bad state right now. You can look at GDP per capita. Recently, there was a news that India became the fifth largest economy in the entire world, beating UK. That is also because the British economy has been in a downslide. I'm not saying that the Indian economy would not have surpassed the British economy. It would have eventually. But because the British economy is in a downward trend, the Indian economy with its own pace has been able to overtake the British economy easily. That can be very, very easily seen in this graph of GDP per capita. Now, if you actually see here, the downward trend started from somewhere before 2020. So it's basically at the time of the pandemic that it all started. In fact, the economic growth, economic activity in Britain ever since Brexit took place has not really been flourishing. So since then, there has been a downward trend. Now, if you look at the political challenge that the British government is facing right now, ever since Rishi Sunak has actually become the Prime Minister, there have been a lot of racist attacks that have been made against him. There was a video clip that got viral. I'm not sure if you saw it or not. There was a British person who called into this radio station and who said, no, I can't believe this. This can't happen. Imagine if I become the prime minister of Pakistan. Imagine if I become the head of Saudi Arabia. You won't believe it. So how is it that a non-white person is becoming the head of UK? So the reality is not everyone in the common public has accepted their new prime minister. Understand this. Rishi Sunak becoming the Prime Minister was not really the original choice. It was not something that people kept in mind while voting. It is something like people voting for the BJP thinking that Mr. Modi will become the Prime Minister. But after some month, 
he goes and someone else becomes a prime minister. So you still want this party in power, but the person that you voted for, that face is not there. Similarly, is what is happening in UK. And the people in UK, although they still support the Conservative Party, but for them it is difficult to accept that the face for which they actually voted is not the face who is the Prime Minister right now. And that is why the acceptance ratio, as you say, or there have been many polls that have come out. All those polls suggest that majority of the common public still is not really happy with that decision. Many people in fact are saying that this was just the only option remaining with the Conservative Party. If you would have seen this race of the Prime Ministership, all other candidates that were in the race for Prime Minister actually opted out and Nishi Sunak automatically became the Prime Minister. So this acceptance of Rishi Sunak to the or from the side of the common public still remains to be seen. It still remains to be seen how exactly is it that the common public reacts to it because when the general elections actually happen, which are very, very near in UK, you will have to see whether Rishi Sunak is actually able to get votes in his face on his identity because last time the votes that were given was for the Conservative Party and not for Rishi Sunak as such. The economic crisis, as we talked about, have led to a lot of very, very devastating impact on the British economy. The losing, the, val the pound that is losing their value, the inflation that is going up day after day, all of that has led to increase in the price of import. Like most of the nations, UK also depends hugely on the Russian natural gas when it comes to the European nations. Because of that supply being choked up partially because of their own sanctions, their cost of importing natural gas and every other commodity has increased considerably. As I discussed, the situation is so bad that in an advanced country such as UK, even there people are being forced to sell off their household stuff just to sustain. There have been news reports of electricity bills doubling, increasing by 80-90%. All of that <clears throat> is kind of unprecedented and these kind of situations were only seen at a time of the Great Depression, at the time when the entire world was going through an economic crisis in 2008. <clears throat> if you compare how the pre-COVID era or the pre-COVID economic trend was as compared to the current trend, even currently the British economy has not really gone back to the pre-COVID era and they still have to work very, very hard to control inflation. There were a few statements that came out from the Bank of England saying that we are fully capable of controlling inflation. They said that all the government bonds that we have bought, we will start selling them off very, very soon from the month of November. Whether or not they are able to actually control inflation and bring it down up to desired level still remains to be seen. There is something else also that I wanted to share. If you look at the business activity in UK, how the overall economy is progressing, even when the pandemic was behind us, if you consider that from the beginning of 2022 year at least, we did not really have a lot of impact of pandemic. Even after that, if you look at the major sectors of British economy, be it manufacturing, be it services, be it composite, all of these are in a downwards trend. So there is hardly any good news that you actually see coming out of the British economy. When something becomes bad over such a long time, you cannot expect that to change all of a sudden just because you have a new prime minister. Because the party remains the same, the economic situation remains the same, the problems remain the same. Just because you have a new prime minister of, <clears throat> let's say, a different color, a different origin, that does not mean that everything will change all of a sudden. There is one more very interesting fact I wanted to share. On social media, you see a lot of these kind of posts being shared at Rishi Sunak, Indian origin person has now become the head of UK. But the fact is, there are multiple nations across the world where the leaders of those nations, either prime ministers or president or vice president, are of Indian origin. Yes, it's a very, very special occasion because UK and UK's history with India is very different. But if you look around the world, there are multiple examples. The Portugal Prime Minister, <coughs> Antonio Costa, his father actually belonged to Goa. Then 
we have Guyana's president Mohammed Irfan, we have Mauritius, Mauritius has had a history of multiple leaders of Indian origin, we have Pravind uh, Jagnath, we have Prithvi Raj Singh Rupan again from Mauritius, we even have president of Suriname, we have Kamala Harris, not just this, just next door to UK, look at Ireland look at Ireland. Ireland has also had an Indian origin leader. In fact, they will very soon again as the head of their government will again have an Indian origin leader. So this story of Indian origin leaders actually going and becoming the top leaders of nations around the world, this is not happening for the first time and this will not happen for the last time as well. But that does not really mean that their loyalty actually lies towards India. That only means that yes, they are more aware of Indian culture, they are more aware of how Indians think, they are more aware of aspirations of Indians. So we may hope that in the long run while taking crucial decisions, that can come in handy. But just because a leader of some other nation is or was of our origin three or four generations back, doesn't really mean anything significant, so do underline that part. Now, there are many people who are debating what will be India-UK relation future in the light of Rishi Sunak now coming to the post of the Prime Minister. As I said earlier as well, the short answer is that nothing really is expected to change overnight. Because his appointment as a Prime Minister has come so all of a sudden that now means that actually if you look at his history as politician, he has made a lot of statements about economy. He was the finance minister also, but he has not made a lot of statements about diplomacy. He has not made a lot of statements about international relations. He has not made a lot of statements about his relations or UK's relations with some other nations. So it is very difficult to now gauge what exactly will be his point of view. Also, because his top priority still remains fixing the British economy, it's very difficult or hard to expect any major change now taking place in diplomatic relations. As you know, India and UK right now are still in talks for the free trade agreement and this has been in talks ever since Brexit happened but it still remains far far away. So it still remains to be seen whether or not there is any progress that is made on the free trade agreement side. The expectation is nothing will happen very quickly because again the top priority of the British government is to fix their economy internally and after that maybe they will focus on how their economic relations are with the nations from other sides of the world as well. As I said, Rishi Zorak has not really made public his foreign policy views. So it remains to be seen how exactly does he tackle relations of UK with other nations. At a time when the Ukraine-Russia war is going on, UK cannot just sit on the sidelines and they have to take a position. Expectation is because he was a supporter of Boris Johnson and he was also supporter of Brexit, he does not really or he would not really be very friendly with China specifically. But there is no significant statement that has been made from him. Now, there is also one more point of view here. With Rishi Surak becoming the Prime Minister of UK, there are also discussions about the impact of Indian diaspora in nations such as UK. Now, not just India, but the entire Asian diaspora, means the people of Asian origin that live in UK, their population has constantly been increasing. If you look at the average income of UK and then you look at the average income of let's say Indian origin people in UK, you will see that almost always the average income of Indian origin people will be higher in UK because when they go there, they go there with aspirations of a better life so they work much much harder. The population of Indian origin people, the population of Hindus also is increasing constantly in nations such as US and nations such as UK. And that is why they are now being seen as a considerable vote bank as well. You can see this in US as well. When Donald Trump in 2016 was actually fighting uh, the presidential election, he actually held rallies with leaders of Indian origin, especially where the Hindus were invited, especially where Indian origin people were invited so that they can vote for him. The same is now the case in UK as well. For example, about 86% of English population of population of England and Wales is white, but the Asian ethnic community also now makes up 7.5% of the British population, which is not a small population by any stretch of imagination. So the rise of Rishi Sunak also gives a signal 
towards the rise of the Asian community, towards the rise of the Indian community, Indian diaspora in the most advanced nations in the world, including the UK as well. For Indian origin people, specifically as per the last census, there were about 14 lakh people of Indian origin in UK, which are roughly 2.5% of British population. This was 2011 census numbers and the latest numbers when they come out, the number would have increased even more. This was the session that we had for you, I hope. Now you are much more aware and you have much more clarity about the economic and the political crisis of UK. It is far, far from being resolved. It remains to be seen how in the coming days the new policies that are introduced by the new Prime Minister actually make a difference on the ground or not. We will keep you updated about that as well in our other initiatives. I hope you follow all of the initiatives that we bring for you on our YouTube channel. The CNA where we analyze the Hindu newspaper, the daily quiz. These go live at 7 p.m., 6 p.m. every single day. We also have the international relations this week. Every week, Wednesday, 8 p.m., and we have the explained session as well. I hope that you are taking advantage of all of these. If you have not subscribed to our channel till now, please do hit the subscribe button. Please share it with all the other friends who are planning to prepare for the UPSC examination. Also, in the comment section, you can share with us any other topic that you would like us to take up in the next explained session, that is next Friday. Till then, bye-bye. Have a good night. Jai Hind.